Gang, I think I'm at the new Epcot Pavilion. Okay, so there's a big piece of theme park news that everyone's talking about now. I'm just gonna cut right to it. It's very exciting. Puppet Up is coming to Not Scary Farm. That's right. Taking over for Elvira's longtime residency at the Charles M. Schultz Theater is Henson Alternative's Adults Only Improv Show. Which means that I am technically Brian Henson's co-worker now. Yes, of course, I'm coming back to Scary Farm this year. This is the State of the Doggins portion of the video now. We'll be back with the D23 portion in a little bit. I will once again be in the dark ride maze. I'll be wearing the same mask I wore last year, so if you see this guy, it might be me. It might not, though. There are a handful of people who wear that mask. As Spider-Man said, anyone can wear the mask. But there are also a few new mazes I'm really excited about this year, so definitely come down to Scary Farm later this month. It's going to be a great time. It's also a very busy time for me, of course, but I'm trying to work far enough ahead on videos that we don't have to settle for best ofs too many weeks on this channel. But I've overpromised before, so please bear with me if I fall flat on my face. But something I can promise, Throwback Thursday is coming back to the Patreon! Some of you may remember from a few years ago when I was doing a regular Throwback Thursday feature for patrons at the $2 and up level. Some of these features included commentaries on older videos, uh, deleted scenes, outtakes, and raw footage from older videos, long overdue vlogs, and of course, embarrassing old crap. Stuff I made before YouTube, or at least never released to YouTube, that I don't want the public to see. Unless they pay me two bucks to see it. Well, Throwback Thursday's coming back, baby! And to start it off, Allie and I recorded commentaries for all the How Dave Spent His Summer and How Dave Spent His Fall videos. And you'll be getting those one a week for the next seven weeks, only on Patreon. Uh, I'll tell you a little more about it, but uh, first I gotta get a burger from that sketch show from that channel I didn't get as a kid. I've always said children's sketch shows need more alcohol. Hey, welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? All right, quick break to try a burger. It's okay. Not worth $13, but at least I get to live somebody else's nostalgia. The fries are pretty good, I will give it that. I like these fries a lot. Now, some of the Throwback Thursday stuff probably will uh, become public eventually and be released on the YouTube channel one day, but a lot of it is going to be behind the paywall for the foreseeable future, but let's just say forever, because uh, let's face it, uh, one, I don't want some of the embarrassing old craps to really be what comes up when you search my name, but also just because I gotta make money somehow. I don't have an AdSense account, so the only ways I make money from this are Patreon and maybe, maybe merchandise. So basically, the more support I get on Patreon, the more time I can spend making silly things to entertain you, and the less time I have to spend working other jobs that pay me money for not entertaining you. I appreciate everyone's support. I understand if times are tough and you're not able to pledge. I get that completely. Rest assured, the main content on this channel will always be free. It'll just be the nice bonus material. That'll be a nice bonus as a thank you to those who are able to help turn this into something more of a job for me. Okay, now that the business is out of the way, let's talk D23. Um, I wasn't at D23, even though I live 10 miles from Anaheim. I just did not really have the money to spend to wait in lines to maybe get into the panels. Uh, but I did watch the live stream of the Parks panel, so I did get to partake in the grand tradition of people named Bob sort of stammering awkwardly about Disneyland. So, so how thrilling is that? You know, we really can't wait for our guests to, in Orlando to visit, uh, visit Galaxy's Edge as well. Now, Art Linkletter has just gone to, down to the landing to give a wonderful send-off to the riverboat Mark Twain on its maiden voyage. But before we join him, I'd like to have you see Slewfoot Sue's Golden Horseshoe. It's really the, the show place of the frontier. You know, in the folklore of the Old West, there, there were so many legends that were real, and they became men. And so many men that were so real, they became legends. I don't know, the panel was mostly a split between elaborating on things that they had announced last time, 
announcing things for countries we'll never visit, and announcing things that we just don't care about, like cruise ships and targets. Although I'm happy Joe Rohde is so happy that he got to design an island. In the elaborating on stuff that they announced last time department, um, I do really like the uh, El Capitune uh, entrance for uh, Toontown Runaway Railway on this coast. I think the Spidey ride has potential, even though it could be pretty underwhelming, especially compared to Islands of Adventure Spidey ride. Like, sure, it'll have the interactive element, but unless there's a surprise supervillain, it's going to be a less exciting adventure, it sounds like. It's going to be more wacky shenanigans, which I guess is in keeping with the uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man movies that are so much about, you know, the high school struggles of an awkward teenager. So I don't hate that angle. It's just this is Disney's first Spider-Man ride, and they've got a tough act to follow with Universal Spider-Man rides. So I don't know. I'm cautiously optimistic for that. Uh, but I am pretty optimistic for the uh, Avengers Wakanda ride, especially if it is the Kuka arm experience that the concept art makes me think it is. And the stuff in the Star Wars hotel sounds really cool, although I am kind of counting the days until they figure out a way to narratively justify getting real sunlight in there to stave off the inevitable madness. Oh yeah, this screen over here showing a star field, that's a real window showing you outside to real outer space. This window over here showing you outside, that's a screen simulating a mysterious planet called Florida. Please make sure you spend at least a few minutes each day looking at Florida. Most of the new announcements that actually affect U.S. park fans were about Epcot, and I think that new Walt statue is hilarious. Like, everyone's calling it casual Walt, but really, there are uh, two separate things the pose suggests to me. One is, like, the Thanos, you know, ah, I've conquered everything and now I'm sitting down sort of deal. And the other is just weary, depressed Walt being like, I wanted to build a city. Why did they build another theme park here? Epcot was never supposed to be a theme park. What is all this nonsense? But most of what's coming to Epcot, I'm cool with. I actually really like the redistricting of Future World, even though the naming convention is a little off. I get that they're trying to match World Showcase, but the way to do that is to use the word showcase in the names, not the word world. Discovery Showcase, Celebration Showcase, Nature Showcase. Did they just have to keep world in all the names as tribute to future world? Is that the picture of Mr. Toad selling Owl the deed of these lands? But Future World was a barely applicable name even at the start of Epcot, and it was always kind of redundant with Tomorrowland anyway, so I really like that there's more specificity in the regions now. I was hoping they'd announce a good Journey into Imagination refurb, but beggars can't be choosers. I also really like that they're plussing up the theming of Future World, adding more greenery and stuff. I definitely do have a soft spot for the 80s future design of Future World, but it was always really sparse. I know Epcot was literally a park divided, but I didn't like how one half had all the pretty theming and the other half had all the attractions with very little overlap. Now we're getting more overlap, and that's good. Speaking of overlap and World Showcase getting more attractions, the stream I was watching crashed the second Dick Van Dyke took the stage. But I was able to find another one before he left the stage, so Mary Poppins attraction, let's talk about it. I'm excited. Mary Poppins is my favorite thing the Disney company has ever done. My love for Mary Poppins knows no bounds. I wish we got more specifics about what the attraction would be, because if they're building a whole Cherry Tree Lane offshoot just for a spinny ride, well, I frankly wouldn't put it past them. I will be happy with Cherry Tree Lane theming no matter what. I will be especially happy if Admiral Boom's cannon goes off. I will be happy if they build a little bit of the park. Uh, but I'll also be happy if it's just the little bit of street and the familiar buildings. Like, that's a cool offshoot that would, you know, fit in organically with the existing UK pavilion, but also just have that familiarity while still fi fitting the aesthetics of the area. It's, again, a good way to incorporate the dreaded IP into World Showcase. I just wish we had more specifics about what the Mary Poppins attraction would be. Obviously, I've thought a lot over the years about what a Mary Poppins ride could be. Basically, since my first visit to Disneyland, I was like, oh man, they should put a Mary Poppins ride in here somewhere. And uh, I know I'm not alone. 
Uh, the, the only reason I have no plans to do an armchair Imagineering for a Mary Poppins ride is because Tony Baxter already armchair Imagineered a Mary Poppins ride before he became a real Imagineer, and frankly, who am I to compete with Tony Baxter? I would love it if the new Mary Poppins ride was a full dark ride that even used some of Tony's designs. I don't necessarily expect that to be the case. But who knows, maybe I could be pleasantly surprised. But it also could just be a dumb sing-along or something, I don't know. Really hoping for a dark ride. I would not mind a dark ride that incorporated elements from both the original movie and Mary Poppins Returns. I think there are sequences in both of them that would make for good dark ride sequences. Or even if it's a new Mary Poppins adventure that's in the spirit of uh, the sequences in the movies. It even could be uh, based on another chapter in one of the books that they just haven't made into a movie yet. There's so much you can do with the Mary Poppins ride, and I just don't know what they're going to do. It would be helpful for them if they hadn't yet stripped the uh, great movie ride Poppins animatronic for parts and could just place that in the new ride. That would be pretty handy, wouldn't it? Well, if the last two years is any indication, I'm sure we'll get a few more details about the Mary Poppins attraction at the next D23. I know they announced other stuff at D23 that doesn't have to do with parks, like a bunch of stuff for Disney+, Plus, but uh, I'm mostly just getting it for Candace Against the Universe. Alright, thanks for joining me for this update that was all over the map, and uh, if you want to see really, 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 really embarrassing videos I made when I was young... All it costs is $2 a month. And even if you don't, thanks for supporting me with your time and attention. Smash that like button, kick flip that subscribe, tell all your friends, do the things. I'm not very good at self-promotion, which is why I need all the help I can get. And join us next week when I make a silly thing to try and entertain you. So until then, this is Dave, signing off.